is. And I agree, Natasha, just so we're clear. Okay. I just think it is correct. Okay. And, I don't and, know if it is or not. Okay, that's fine. I'm saying let's, I'm saying we've, the whole time you guys been on, ever since Carrington left, you've been talking about, oh, let's try to prove it's not. So I'm going to give you just a little information that was in the article. So it's a little bit deeper than looks or jokes or anything like that. We're dealing with systemic, um, exclusion is is systemic discrimination of African Americans and it's historical just like Carrington said and in the article they the uh the author specifically interviewed people and gave them the opportunity to say you know this isn't about exclusion and they explicitly stated this actually is for example the owner of Soul Cantina Bar which is a bar Carrington was trying to get a party at, he literally stated, that's flat out, that's not the kind of, he said that we won't be playing rap music, that's not the kind of crowd we want here. So it's not just, we don't want to play the music because we don't like the music and we prefer this music. No, we're, we're specifically not playing the music because the, the people that like that music, we don't want that crowd. The other person is, Mr. Uh, Bob Negro, who owns a lot of the stuff in, in Westport. His, his name is Nigro. Nigro. Thank, thank you for that correction. And I actually tweeted you earlier. But he stated that um, he's owned a few nightclubs and, you know, he's had fewer problems out of the country cl- crowd, as if the country and rock crowd in bars and alcohol, just as Carrington said earlier, doesn't ch- cause any, you know, drama or any, you know, violence or anything like that. And he stated that um, people are get afraid to talk about race, but you have to talk about it when you're in the nightlife business. So I'm telling you that he's specifically doing things based on race. So it's not just a happenstance. And he also stated that it's ridiculous to suggest that there's some racism in Westport. He said, everyone's welcome everywhere. And if hip hop's not your liking, okay. But what I'm saying is he specifically is excluding a certain part of a certain amount of people. And the other individual who is in another place, he was specifically excluding. And so we're dealing with systematic white supremacy here. That's what I'm stating for you. Let me jump in for a second. And I know a lot of the locations that I'm going to name uh, or some of the locations I'm going to name probably won't mean anything to you if you just got in town from, from St. Louis. But, but let me ask you, and I'm going to throw this out to play the devil's advocate for a second. Is it possible that it's not systemic white supremacy, as you suggested, and maybe just a concern? Let me finish, and then you're welcome to weigh in. And maybe a concern about, you know, fool me once, shame on me, or shame on you, do fool me twice, shame on me that this city may have created for itself after we have watched, and I've been in this town for over 30 years, so I've seen it, where young black men and boys primarily have caused incredible disruption, even forced the closing of certain places like the Indian Springs Mall, the Bannister Mall, uh, caused outrageous problems in the plaza area. Westport for sure over the last decade, and maybe is it possible that it's not systemic white racism or supremacy and just sort of a fear if, 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 if we allow large groups of black young men and, and teenagers into this area or this establishment, uh, we may become the next Westport or we may become the next Indian Springs or Bannister Mall. The plaza has, has endured incredible trouble over the last five years because of young black teenagers and men who are just parading through the streets for no reason other than to either support or looking to cause trouble. Okay, so the, the question in itself is, is, is actually a systemic white supremacist question just because, just because the generalization of African American men and boys from the actions of however many you're talking about is actually dangerous. It actually gets people killed and murdered in the streets because they say, oh God, I fear for my life. Why did you fear for your life? Oh, because they're a black male. That's literally, that's literally discrimination. It's literally race racial profiling is literally white supremacy that's what it is and when we're talking about certain issues that have happened we never generalize white men white men do things white boys do things white boys go and shoot up schools do we generalize all white guys and say you know what i don't want any white kids in this school because they shoot up schools generally no we don't but we only do that listen listen we only do that with black people and i'm letting you know that that's a form of systematic white supremacy and if wait let me just say this 
If you're saying that, then you're actually in agreement with everything in the article. You're saying that it's a purposeful, and what we're saying as young black professionals, I just graduated law school, okay? What we're saying is we're being systematically excluded it's no inclusion from certain areas of the city. And if, and if that's true, what you said, then there are basically invisible white only signs on these entertainment districts. And if Kansas City, Missouri is okay with having invisible white only signs and by justifying it by a few actions of a few African American males and boys, then that's what Kansas City is saying. But what we're saying is don't ignore it and don't act like it doesn't exist. Sure. Just because it doesn't sound good. Because we're in the show me state. So we like to show up. We like to look good. But no, forget Josh, the looking good. Josh, we're up against traffic and weather. Two things I want to I get in and then we're going to come back to this. So we like to show up. We like to look good. Natasha, real quick. Yes. Natasha, we're up against traffic and weather. Two things I want to I get in and then we're going to come back to this. So we like to show up. We like to look good. Natasha, we're up against traffic and weather. Two things I want to I want to get in and then we're going to come back to this after the top of the hour. I have said on this very program. Two things. Certainly on school shootings, and I was skewered for it, but we do. We own that. And, yes, you could point out the D.C. sniper. That is one case out of a dozen. But, but, I have said that. But, but, number two, the issue, we're coming back to this now. Teenage, coming back. the issue with teenage black boys on the plaza causing problems is not the same thing as young professionals having an issue feeling welcome in our entertainment okay. district. I have a question totally for you. Separate. I have a question for you when we come back to the newsroom and we'll stare. Happening now on KMC, a planned chicken slaughterhouse loses millions in support. More next. Hey, it's Scott Park here to tell you about how one lucky homeowner can win a $7,500 window makeover. Realize problem with racism in America. We're going to disagree about the cause, but I would agree that there is an enormous problem with gun violence in the inner city. Yes. You, you, you were pointing out, though, during the news break, and uh, I'm not throwing you under the bus. I, yeah. I, I'm wanting to use this because to further the conversation. Because we're part of the problem when we fear young black males based on their behavior on the planet. And you said to me off the air, and I think it's safe to repeat it, you said, Scott, let's be honest about that call. If I was, if I, you... Yeah. If I was in a car in a plaza parking garage and a bunch of young black men walked by, I would be a little nervous. And, and that's exactly what Natasha's talking about that is causing the overall issue later with someone like Carrington wandering onto but, the but, plaza but I, have a meal. I would remind you, and, and my response to you was, that's garbage. Yes, Dana, anybody white or black, I would su suspect, would be nervous if you're a professional in your 40s or something and you're on the plaza with your wife or husband having dinner. You would be nervous if you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Native American. I don't care. If a group of young black men with their pants halfway down their butt came walking by your car in a plaza parking garage, you would be nervous. However, because of the problems we have seen in the past, yes. Especially on the plaza Especially and in Westport. Yeah. But I also pointed out to you, whether you are white, black, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, if a group of professional black men walked by your car all wearing suits or khaki pants and polo shirts, walked by your car, you wouldn't think twice about that. I would not. I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I like. wouldn't think twice about it if a group of six black men went walking by my car and they were wearing suits or what they well, call casual say, work if, dress. If they were working, wearing casual attire like Dan Weinbaum right now, I wouldn't think a thing. Or if they were wearing the jeans. The problem, yeah, most, most people wouldn't dress like Dan. Yeah, problem, I'd be afraid if they were dressed like me. Yeah, if I saw a black man walking like that, I'd be nervous. The problem <laughs> that we have seen on the plaza is with 13 to 17-year-old angry, and one of them bumped into you, Scott, and tried to start a fight. Well, angry, he wasn't try he young He wasn't trying man. to start a fight, let's be fair. He was he was simply trying to be a D and, and intimidate me. In all fairness, if you were sitting, Dana, in your car on the plaza, uh, you know, applying a little bit of makeup before you went out to meet your friends, and six white kids with long hair, Metallica t-shirts, mm -hmm. horn that jeans, was the point I was about and to combat boots started walking by your car looking at you, it wouldn't matter that they were white. You'd be like, holy crap, lock the doors. I don't know if I yeah. want to get out of here. If six white kids walked by with long black trench coats and black fingernails, 
you, and black hair. That, yes. They look like flock of seagulls rejects. You would look at them and go, look, click. Yeah, because my girlfriend in a Nordstrom parking lot was pistol whipped and had her car stolen at gunpoint by that very crowd that you um, <laughs> described. Somebody writes, with their pants hanging down to their butts, uh, it's not 1999, bud. Sagging is out. No, it's not. Uh, you haven't lived in my neighborhood. I saw it yesterday three times. It takes a while. Counting. It takes a while for the culture to update in Kansas City. Yeah, we're a little behind. We're a little behind. 18 years but, back. But I don't disagree, and this is where you and I disagree, Scott. I don't disagree with anything Natasha said. I don't. Well, here's where you and I would disagree. And it comes from the what came first, the chicken or the egg. Correct. And I have said this a thousand times. She's saying we're afraid and shouldn't be, and you're saying we're afraid not based on I'm racism, but a- on the pattern of behavior yes. that we have seen in West I, 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 I will say this, and I might get in trouble for this. I may lose my award from the NAACP, and quite frankly, well, I gladly accept it humbly. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, if I have to lose it for speaking the truth, I will. Here is the problem. I've said it a thousand times. I'm almost getting blue in the face saying it. In the urban core of Kansas City, the black community, and I'm not saying all of it, but to some extent a large portion of it, whether it's a majority or not, I don't. I have no idea. The black community has a serious problem in Kansas City that for whatever reason is not addressed. And that problem sees itself on the plaza when 600 young black teenagers and young men and women go marching through, destroying property, getting in fights at the J.C. Nichols Fountain, engaging in shooting that throws a mayor into the bushes outside of the Cheesecake Factory. We've seen it at Westport, and damn it, we have seen it shut down Indian Springs Mall and Bannister Mall. That is a fact. And if those facts are hard to hear, then I am sorry. But the black community can no longer stop just blaming white supremacy and, oh, my God, the white people don't like us. And they need to take people like Natasha, need to take a serious look at what is going on in the black community with the uh, high rates of unwed mothers, 70 percent. That's a fact, by the way, with the high rates of black on black murders. That is a fact. I don't need to prove it. And with what has happened at Indian Springs and Bannister Mall, and they need to say, are we the problem? Are we but, creating but see, this problem? She would problem? say, and I hate to put words in her mouth, that, that someone like Carrington feeling unwelcome as a young professional, popular professional in Kansas City, feeling less than welcome at a Californos should have nothing to do with a group of unruly teens on the plaza with violence in their minds two years ago. But I would ask you, Dana... And you're who, saying you can't separate the two. What I'm saying, He's saying you should. And it is unfortunate if Carrington and Travis, and I'll take their words for it, if Carrington and Travis, who are upstanding, young, professional black men, okay? Yes. If they go into an establishment in this city and do not feel welcome, that is a problem. I have... There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. However, there is a however. However, instead of going racist, right, white people... Maybe what they also need to say, instead of just like Natasha said, racist white people, they also that ain't what I said. Why do the people in this establishment feel uncomfortable when a black person walks by? Is it their own problem? Yes. Is there a bit of racism? I I don't want to say racism necessarily, but certainly racial insensitivity. I think would be a word word you could use. Okay. However, if if I was a young black man like a Travis or a Carrington, I would say, man, that's not fair that I'm getting looks when I walk into an establishment. When I've done nothing wrong. When I've done nothing wrong. I go to work every day. But is it just their fault, or is it the people in the urban core that have created this mentality? But she's saying one should have nothing to do with the other, and I understand that. But one does have everything to do with the other. That's not what I said. I'm looking at the text line, and the, you know, the original thing about the young professional black folks not having a place to go, this text line says, I've been here three years, I'm from Georgia, KC Metro is beautiful and filled with opportunity, but I can't wait to move back to Georgia, I'm a black professional female, I feel more at home down there, but uh, they don't, she doesn't feel welcome here, she feels ignored. Well, she doesn't have a place, and I think that may be the point from a lot of these millennials in this article. Five 
and local. This is Kansas City's 98.1 FM, KMBC. You know, it's something that's happened to almost all of us, and knock on wood happens to none of us in the future. But if you do, find yourself in a car accident, whether it's something serious, God forbid, a bender, hail damage, from several... <laughs>